So you want to tell me that voting equals violence. I'm sorry, but I'm having a hard time accepting this leftist statist drivel coming from people who claim to understand and support the non-aggression principle. Now, I know if you're new here, this might seem like a little inside baseball kind of thing, but it really is critically important in determining how we can move forward towards freedom as, as a species, as a society, as, as a movement of people who care about freedom and claim to understand and advocate for the non-aggression principle that is based on self-ownership, that is the core of libertarianism. And you would think that just out of the intellectual honesty, we wouldn't be trying to play these semantic games to say that voting is violence. Now, from a clear, ethical, direct understanding of what physically is happening here, what voting is, you walk into a booth, you check a piece of paper, or you press a button or a touch screen on a machine, you express your preference, and ta-da, you have voted. That's it, there's nothing more to that act. The unethical part of an election is not the voting, an individual voter coming in and expressing preference, even if that is a preference for violence. So looking at this in the worst case scenario, Let's take, for example, the great strides that we have made in the United States towards ending the drug war with marijuana referendums, state ballot initiatives, and the various ways that it has been made legal, quasi-legal, medically available, what have you, in various places in the United States. When you came out and said, I vote against those proposals, you said, I vote for marijuana to be prohibited, yes, you are asking for violence. Now, Turning back to the ethical person looking at this, or the person claiming to analyze this occurrence from an ethical perspective, you are asking for violence. Yes, you are asking for unjustified violence to be done against peaceful people. You are asking to deny them the freedom to decide what they put in their own bodies, that fundamental human right. So yes, you are asking, again, critical word here, asking someone else to do violence on your behalf, or just to do violence, and you are giving them what they would take then as justification for doing that, that government claims that through voting they get the authority and therefore are able to do what they do, whether it's ethical or not, because the people, it's the will of the people through the duly elected voting representative blah 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 scam racket process that they take. So this idea that we can now say, well, if it causes harm, it's violence. Like, no, there is a, we, we can use these metaphors, but when we're talking about politics, when we're talking about ethics, we're talking about physical reality. And, and I have to almost interject here with a pitch for nonviolent communication, of which I'm a huge advocate. And I have to tell libertarians every time I introduce the idea of nonviolent communication, uh, I'm here in Acapulco right now. I'm going to be doing a workshop on nonviolent communication at Anarchapulco. I'm really a big advocate of this. Um, I, I'm not some perfect practitioner, but in uh, what I do in my Man on the Street videos, a lot of people appreciate that as an example of nonviolent communication. And in the example where I talked a bully down from wanting to, uh, to beat me up in a bar, they, uh, you know, that's a video that's been uh, pretty successful on the interwebs. I, I will say my hits always surprise me, but I'm really glad to see that this one has been reposted several times and at this point racked up millions of views. But uh, I always point out, no, it, it, yes, non-violent communication here to suggest that there is such a thing as violent communication is metaphorical. Right? We're, we're talking about a metaphor here within the realm of communication to create a, a concept that allows us to have more effective communication. And part of that process is precision of language. So to say that voting is violence is to put voting as an act in your political discourse in the realm of metaphor and to take it out of the realm of immediate physical reality, which is what we're supposed to be talking about when we're talking about ethics and politics and the, the, the cold, hard reality that is government and how we interact with it, I'm sorry, but if you want to say that voting is violence, go find yourself a safe space where you'll be protected from the violence of people making expressions that you don't like. I'm sorry, you can't convince me 
with slogans that voting is violence of anything except that you're willing to use metaphor in what I would think is not only an appropriate way, but one that discourages potential participation in politics that, again, as we cite the marijuana legalization efforts in the United States as evidence, can yield very worthwhile results, especially given where we are right now. Now, there's another objection sort of related to this, that voting legitimizes the state. And so just in, in preparation for this segment, I asked Google to give me the dictionary definition of legitimize. And that, that's obvious, you know, it is it, to make legitimate. And we'll get back to what is the definition of legitimate. But first, the, the very first example here, I love this. Voters legitimize the government through the election of public officials. Oh, 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 am I wrong? Is Adam wrong? Is, is, the, is the government definition right as an example here? Oh, oh, wow. Uh, could it be that Adam is completely off base here? Because according to Google, voters legitimize the government through the election of public officials. Now, to make, so, so, so let's, let's get to the word legitimate here. The property, so uh, it's an adjective. This is now into the actual definition at dictionary.com. According to law or lawful is legitimate. Now, most people don't really think of it that way, like, as we know that there are illegitimate laws, right? But according to law or lawful. Now, this gets to the question that you have to ask yourself what is according to law? What is lawful? Is the drug war legitimate because there is a law that says that marijuana is schedule one of no legitimate medical value at the federal level and therefore subject to all the federal enforcement of the drug war? Or would you rather reference the higher authority of the Constitution that says we have a right to privacy in oh so many ways? Uh, or even the higher authority than that, the Declaration of Independence, which references our unalienable or unalienable rights inherent to our humanity. So the next definition here, definition two, in accordance with established rules, principles, or standards. Now that's what we think of much more as legitimate in, in, in common usage, right? Uh, born in wedlock or of legally married parents, of course we use illegitimate to speak of illegitimate children in that sense. In, and then number four, in accordance with laws of reasoning, logically inferable, logical. Number five, resting on or ruling by the principle of hereditary right, as in a legitimate heir, a legitimate sovereign is their example here. Six, not spurious or unjustified, genuine. Seven, of the normal or regular type or kind. Now, <clears throat> what we get to most importantly here, when we're talking about back to the original question of voting equals violence, uh, which is either a dangerous leftist idea or a dangerous statist idea. Because according to the state, voting makes it lawful. Voting makes it legitimate. It gives them legitimately uh, elected representatives capable of passing law, regardless of whether it's in accordance with the natural law, with ethical law, with higher law. And so for someone to say that voting legitimizes a state and therefore we shouldn't do it is not only endorsing the status propaganda, but it's also uh, ignoring the reality. And if you go back just in American history, you would know that in the first American election, what legitimized the state? Less than 2% of the population participating in the first constitutional presidential election. Voting is not what legitimizes the state. Violence is really what legitimizes the state for the state, what makes it, as it would say, lawful. It is the violence of the state that puts its written law above the natural law, above your natural right. It is unlawful. It is illegitimate, no matter how many people vote for it. But as we have seen, we have come to the point in human history where there is sufficient accountability and that the imperfect leash of democracy serves at least as a tether to keep it from drifting too far away from the reality of public opinion. There is an incredible opportunity that we have to, through the election process, withdraw our consent from the state and ensure a peaceful, orderly, responsible transition 
to a voluntary society.